A revered family therapist uses roleplay to help four women in finding happiness. However, they soon realized that this free course was for his own benefit. In a luxurious suit, Alexander Simonov grabs a revolver and loads one bullet. He dances languidly and aims the gun to his chin, but a knock on the door interrupts him. His visitor, Varvara, greets him, saying his agent, Pasha, sent her to take care of him. Tempted, he welcomes her in and goes to the bathroom to freshen up before joining her. After their time, Varvara saunters off, leaving Alexander to type something on his website. Days later, Alexander prepares a room while talking to Pasha over speakerphone, justifying the legitimacy of his experiment. He ignores his agent's arguments as his subjects have arrived. Three women arrive, with one of them being a fan of the psychological health books Alexander authored. He welcomes them to his free therapy course that he calls How to Find Happiness. To start, the ladies introduce themselves. His fan introduces herself as Svieta, and the other woman who prefers his audiobooks is Natalia. The third woman is Anna, but she refuses to share more. Moving on, the therapist mentions a fourth member who's late, but Anna suddenly mutters that she's a skeptic about therapy. She doesn't believe in psychotherapy and only responded to the program out of curiosity. Just then, the fourth woman arrives. As Alexander goes to fetch her, the three women talk about why the fourth one had a separate ride. Natalia mentions that she's a high-profile singer, and famous people often have deeper problems. Alexander arrives and introduces Olga to them. With all four members present, he briefs them that they will first share their problems by enacting their roles in certain scenarios. Natalia starts by saying she's largely ignored and dismissed by her family, and the resentment creeps into her work and how her son treats her. With this, Alexander begins the psychodrama and asks her to picture herself coming home from work and being with her son. Natalia imagines heading to the kitchen, and Alexander plays as her son who's an unsuccessful artist. Natalia acknowledges that creative work is difficult, so she has decided to work to sustain them while he pursues his art. Alexander ignores this and talks about his new idea, even asking her to clear the living room for it. He then manipulates her, saying she looks great and that he feels guilty for not giving her work any value. Natalia replies that she is used to it and hands him expensive clothes to fit in with the artsy crowd. However, Alexander rejects it, knowing that giving things is her way of showing love. He asks what she wants so he can give it, so she asks for a vacation just as he leads it to a kiss. Anna interrupts the roleplay since Alexander is acting more like her husband now. The man deflects that it's because they can't change anyone's behaviors but their own, so he's leading Natalia to show how she acts with her husband. Natalia shares she had remarried many times, and her previous husbands loved her patient attitude. In the end, however, she ends up leaving them. With this in mind, the psychiatrist explains that when someone holds their negative emotions until their boiling point, every action and experience prior to it gets colored negatively. He advises her to communicate with her current husband better to avoid this. He then suggests Vieta to go next, but she's not ready. Instead, Anna volunteers, saying she fully understands the process. She imagines herself in a hazy blue attic with Alexander as her husband. She tells him that she understands that people change just like how he's in love with a different woman now because he's always distracted. Anna bargains that she's willing to let him go if he admits that he doesn't love her anymore. With Anna imagining her actual husband, the man replies that he'll do anything for her and their children. She laughs, pointing out that they don't have children, but the therapist asks why that is. This makes the woman have a breakdown, so she runs into the bathroom to use her inhaler in the real world. Outside, Alexander advises her not to rush and explains to the others that people often face emotional barriers that keep them from moving forward. He suggests that they should open up more to avoid it. While the therapist makes tea later, Natalia comments how his kitchen looks like it was designed by a woman. Alexander lovingly explains that his wife, Katya, designed it and in doing so, imbued her personality into the whole house. During this, Olga shows something on her phone to Anna, which surprises her. Soon, Alexander notices Anna has returned and resumes the therapy. Olga then gives the phone to Svieta and Natalia, which shows a photo of the renowned therapist with another woman. The latter asks Alexander about it, but the man dodges the question. He reasons that since he's a well-known person, people try to sabotage him. Olga just sums it up as rumors taken out of context. Anna, however, questions his right to give family advice when he's unfaithful. Natalia tries to give him the benefit of the doubt, suggesting that the woman in the photo was a fan who clung to him. The rising argument prompts Alexander to excuse himself, saying he'll have the rumors checked. He goes into a room and looks at the image on his phone. 
Nervous, he then leaves a message for Pasha to look for the woman in the photo. He returns to the group and assures them that the rumor will be disproven. He then urges them to continue the therapy, prompting Sveta to go next. The woman begins by saying that she is always unlucky. She gets picked for weekend shifts at work, doesn't get partners in school dances, along with other kinds of small misfortunes. Alexander thinks she's generalizing all her problems into one factor while ignoring the other important causes. She nods and continues that both she and her fiancé agreed to get married. Olga asks who proposed and she says they both just thought the time was right. Sveta imagines herself in a wedding dress and stating her vows but is interrupted when Alexander, posing as her fiancé, starts working working on the arch behind her. He's unaware of what's happening, so she reminds him that he's not against marriage, so she arranged everything. Alexander gently asks her to wait, but the bride orders Olga, who stands in as her fiancé's actual wife, to join in. Olga hits him for cheating, and Sveta acknowledges that her fiancé still has a family, so they're waiting for his wife to pass away from her illness. However, she's getting tired of waiting. Back in the house, Olga wonders if the wife is actually sick, while Anna thinks the husband lied to keep delaying their wedding. Alexander mentions that this long-term lack of trust made Sveta think it's not worth continuing other relationships. Hearing this, Sveta justifies that she can't find a man like her fiancé. The therapist asks if she interrupted her fiancé's existing relationship, but Sveta defends that he did it himself. Natalia sympathizes with her since she worked to give her husband and son a peaceful life, but they made a fool out of her in return. Changing topics, Alexander asks why Sveta continued the relationship, and the woman states that she just wants to be married. This earns a chuckle from everyone. Unoffended, Sveta justifies that she at least shared and allowed herself to be judged. The therapist's phone then chimes, so he excuses himself. Outside, Alexander speaks to a media representative regarding the photo, but she asks about Katya filing a divorce. This blindsides him, so he refuses to comment before returning to the group. He composes himself and insists on ignoring the rumors about the photo. However, they heard a bit of his conversation, so Olga asks if he is getting a divorce. Alexander confirms that Katya did file for it, but asserts that all the other rumors are false. He then gestures to Olga to take a turn, wanting to be off the spotlight. Olga reveals that she hires men to treat her roughly, then goes home to a husband who doesn't talk to her and a life where their roles are already decided. She takes care of the kids and she gets money to waste. They still do some nightly marital obligations, but it's mostly her moving. Natalia rants that Olga's the same as her but with money. In the end, they tire themselves out doing what their men want, then seek excitement elsewhere. She asks Alexander, who's curled in the couch, if she's right. The man mutters that there's no right or wrong answer. Olga reasons that she cannot financially survive without her husband, but Natalia argues that she needs to devote herself to work. With tension rising, Alexander tells them to get along since everyone in this room, him included, are struggling with their relationships. He reveals that he knew all along that Katya was cheating on him. He saw her in the act but decided not to confront her. Instead, he went to a hotel, and his agent and best friend Pasha sent Varvara to comfort him. However, he wasn't in the mood, so he talked to the woman instead. He asked what upsets her, and the woman daintily replies that she's upset because they aren't doing what she came for. He then wondered if she liked her job, but she revealed that she hated it because there was so much competition and no guarantee that she'd get more clients. She wished that someone would give her guaranteed happiness, even if only a little. That was the moment Alexander realized that he grew hateful of his profession, but it was what sustains him. He sent Varvara off with a hug, promising to talk to her further if she wanted. He mutters that he's tired of his practice, and all he wants now is to find his place in the world. Hence, he gathered the four women and used them as a way to provide himself therapy. The women complain about being used, but he reasons that he's still giving them legitimate therapy. Olga then speculates that his agent, Pasha, was the one sleeping with his wife. Everyone chimes in that Pasha was the one who took the photos and sent Varvara so he could claim that Alexander cheated on his wife with paid services. The therapist justifies that he went to school with Pasha and knows he's a manipulator, but insists that he's a good man. Natalia, however, suspects that Pasha envies him, so he wants to destroy him. This gives Alexander pause. He recalls what he prepared in the bathroom right after Varvara arrived. He asked Pasha why he sent her and the man reasoned that if Katya was willing to throw him away, he deserved better. He reasoned that he was married and Pasha made him wonder if that really mattered. Back in the present, Anna calls out his cowardice since he just takes things as they are. She shares that her husband acts the same and Alexander thinks he's guilty of something serious. The therapist asks why they don't have children in retaliation. Anna suddenly imagines herself 
in a finished kid's room with Alexander where she shares that her husband was willing to do anything for her except have children. She agreed because she loves him. After thinking of it, Anna admits that she attempted to have a child with someone else, only to learn that she couldn't conceive. When she heard that her fiancé didn't want kids, she was actually relieved that she didn't need to try again. Alexander confronts her, asking why she sees her husband negatively even though their marriage was convenient for her. She confesses that she found two children to adopt from an orphanage she volunteered for and already prepared the papers. She wanted to tell her husband, but somehow, he knew about it before she could tell and had been dodging the topic ever since. The the therapist pulls a blanket over both of them and reminds her that ever since she was young, she was always the responsible one. With this in mind, she doesn't need someone else to take control of her life. In reality, the woman asks why Anna can't just change her mind and revoke the adoption to save her marriage. Alexander explains that the contract is also a metaphor for Anna's commitment. If her husband sees how much she truly wants the children, he might be more open about it. Svieta empathizes with Anna and hugs her, saying that things and people can change if they talk. However, Alexander disagrees saying that conversations won't solve Anna's dilemma. Natalia then argues why talking will work for her but not to Anna. The therapist explains that Anna already set the playing field and she is only waiting for her husband to act. In contrast, Natalia hasn't made a move. To help her understand, he and Natalia swap roles, with her acting as her son. As Natalia, Alexander prepares to leave for work and scolds her son for not realizing how good her life is. The woman argues that she'll get rich someday when her art gets recognized. So Alexander asks, asks why she won't find ways to monetize it, work for clients, or even go back to studying. Back in the room, the therapist summarizes that Natalia needs to put an ultimatum like Anna did, even if they won't like the result. Just then, Pasha calls Alexander's phone, so he excuses himself again. Inside his room, he answers the video call with Pasha who claims that he's doing what he can about the circulating image. However, he comments that this has been uncomfortable as he feels like he slept with Alexander's wife. The therapist finds the figure of speech amusing and probes at it. Pasha then admits that he did sleep with Katya but he preemptively encourages Alexander to forgive him so they can keep the controversy quiet. In exchange, he'll undo the damage that the photo caused to his career. Pasha adds that if he doesn't agree, he'll lose his career and his wife. The call ends and Alexander turns to see all the women listening to their conversation. Later, the women help arrange dinner, and Olga asks if they can continue the program because she wants advice like the other women had. However, the therapist notices that Natalia is missing, and Olga says she left. Brushing this off, the rest hold a toast, but Olga insists on getting advice. Svieta advises her to give him space, given his predicament, but the therapist insists that he is a professional and his situation doesn't affect his work. With that, Olga imagines herself meeting Alexander outside. He suggests an alternate method for her, so he plays loud music in a car urging Olga to unleash her emotions. She admits that she found Natalia's silent anger intriguing because it felt like she wanted to make a change. Olga wants to be happy with her husband, but she doesn't know him at all. Alexander asks why she married, so she explains that her parents urged her to marry a rich man. She then finds herself in the cold dining room with her husband, but she snaps, unable to endure his indifference. However, she panics and apologizes. She'd apparently broken one of the glasses in Alexander's kitchen, but he assures her that she did great. Just then, Pasha calls again, but this time, the therapist takes the call at the dining table for everyone to listen to. The agent asks what his decision is, and Alexander confidently tells him to do whatever he wants. Pasha reasons that he's trying to be nice, but the therapist states that he's ruining lives and the women say Pasha should see a shrink. The group ignores Pasha's call as Alexander urges Svieta to continue her story. She rants about her fiancé's wife and how her friend told her to do a cleansing ritual to forget about the man. However, the woman is still indecisive about this, so Alexander advises Svieta to allow herself to have new relationships. Svieta suggests a scenario to illustrate why she can't. They imagine her on a bench with Alexander approaching her to recite poems. She doesn't like it and Alexander agrees, saying it's unnatural. With this in mind, Svieta asks him to flirt with her as himself. He sits down and starts poetically expressing the beautiful person she's worked so hard to hide. The women are touched by this, and Svieta thinks he said the same to Katya when they met. Wanting him to have his own revelation, they ask what he'll do with his situation. After much thought, Alexander decides to talk to his wife. With Anna posing as his Katya, he confronts her. He nervously looks at his notes, but Anna scolds him to talk to her like a person, not a therapist. Alexander nervously says that he's fallen out of love since they both changed separately instead of together due to their careers. He hugs her and apologizes, but Anna says he doesn't want her anymore, so she pushes him. Suddenly, Olga takes him to bed, pretending to be his 
Katya. She asks if he forgot who his wife is and hugs him, asking if he's angry at her. Instead, Alexander hugs her tighter, blaming himself for not seeing the signs and begging for forgiveness. He soon gets up, realizing why he hasn't properly talked to his wife. He goes to the window where Sveta now poses as Katya. He explains that when they finally talk, one of them will ask if their relationship could even be fixed. However, Sveta assures him that everything can be fixed. She holds Alexander's hand and asks if she fears loneliness so much that he'd cling to a broken relationship. He admits to it and asks what he needs to do about it. Sveta shows it by letting go of his hand. Alexander finds himself on a chair, smiling to himself as he's realized what needs to be done. That night, Alexander prepares himself to talk to Katya instead of running away. Elsewhere, Olga talks to her husband and admits to cheating. She asks him to react, so he throws plates on the floor and looks at her, breaking the barrier between them. As for Svieta, she sits by her lonesome and burns her fiancé's clothes as she starts moving on. In Anna's apartment, she soon calls her husband and tells him that she wants to introduce someone. She then proceeds to paint the room for her adopted children, regardless of his answer. Meanwhile, Natalia's having a well-deserved vacation while ignoring her son's calls. In the end, Alexander's therapy showed them the way to make a change in their lives, but it's up to them if that'll lead them to happiness. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.